Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to look at Excel and you might be wondering what, what are we doing with Excel architecture? Well there's actually quite a lot that we can do and you know it's not just your basic spreadsheet tool where you add up some numbers and you make pretty looking colors and you show some information it's a lot more than that and it has evolved into a lot more than that and not only that but we can use a lot of different things integrated into Revit into other architecture programs and if nothing else what we can do with Excel is give you a great idea of some of the things that you need to take into account design wise code wise tons of different things like that uh, so this is going to serve as the introduction to say hey we're going to start looking at Excel a lot more because there's a lot that we can do here as far as getting data out of Revit getting pushing data into Revit uh, things like that there's a lot of things that we can do and I think it's really important to be able to say that uh, we know how to use Excel because it is more than just a spreadsheet tool okay um, but one thing I do want to show you is uh, I'm tired of having to deal with Revit in a sense of bright screen warnings. And I know I don't say that, but uh, that's what it is. It's one giant bright screen. And Excel appears to be something like that as well. And I don't like that. Uh, unfortunately, because even though we do have a dark mode within Excel, uh, that does not impact the actual cells, which I would say is probably 80 to 90% of our user interface when it comes to Excel. That's too bad. Now, how do we fix that? Well, there's a, a great way to do this. And I like to select all the cells, uh, but regardless, we will end up applying this later. It's, it, it is these styles. And so we can come down to these styles and we can choose any of these, of course, they're going to affect whatever cell you're looking at. And obviously we can see that these change the colors. It, it, I mean, it changes all kinds of things, fonts, colors, um, the format that you're using, whether it's text, uh, percentage, money, uh, dollars, whatever it is, uh, things like that, a currency, all of that can come with this different formatting. But I want dark mode. I want essentially black. So let's go to a new style. And I'm going to call this dark because that's exactly what I want. And, and you can see all the different types of things that we can start to format. And so clicking into format here, um, this is the same format that you would see if you were to right click any cell and then choose format. Okay, so I don't care about any specific type of category for the cell and I don't care about alignment either. But what I do care about is color. So the color I do want to be white. Like I want to be able to see this. I want it to be white, but I want it to be white because everything else is going to be black, which is great. So let's go over here to fill actually. Uh, we'll put the fill on I would say black, but um, let's not go quite to black, maybe a couple up from black. And then we want our pattern color to be automatic and then our style to be that solid color. That solid color right there, we choose our color, great. And so we can see our sample is this color. Now we need to deal with the border. So something I found is that a lot of times if you make a completely black screen, you'll it's going to be hard to see the borders, the grids, the things like that. And that we, that's what we want to see. So what I'm going to do is come over here to color and I'm not going to choose white because that would be too much contrast, but I'm going to come down here somewhere in the middle and choose a nice gray color. And I want to apply that to the entire outline. So this is going to apply to the entire outline, all of the cells and basically all the cells that I select. I don't care about protection or locking or hiding or anything like that. Um, so we can come back here to, our font and we can see, yep, it's white. So I'm gonna click okay. And then okay again and cool. So nothing happened, but what we can do up here is see a nice preview of what it is and what it looks like. And I can go ahead and select any cell that I want, click that dark and see, hey, that looks great. You know, that's good. I like that. And so maybe I decide I want to edit this or make this darker. I can right click that, modify it. And yeah, I probably do want this uh, fill to be a bit darker. I can go back down here cool, click OK, and that's going to affect everywhere that I have this dark applied to. Now, you can do this anywhere like I did here, and a lot of times I'll use different styles depending on how I want it to look. But in this case, I want to start my Excel spreadsheet with this entire screen looking dark, just like this. And is that not more beautiful? Now, 
I, again, I mentioned the, the contrast, so I think that's a bit too much of a contrast, but before we go into change that, I want to show you another way that you can uh, import, in a sense, styles that you've made in the past, because that's important. You'll, you don't want to have to make this every single time you open a new uh, workbook for Excel, because you're going to end up doing that a lot. Okay. So coming into here, um, I can actually merge styles, which is awesome. And you can see that I have a another Excel workbook open that I have the exact style that I want applied to already. And so I can merge styles and it's going to merge all the styles that I have there. Now with that, I've only added one new style, which is the dark mode style in that in this workbook here. So what will happen is I will I will then see that here as well. So I'll press OK. And do I want to merge the styles, even though I have all these same names, like I said, all of these normal, bad, good, wait, all of that is going to basically be overwritten. And the result will be no change because I haven't changed that in either workbook. So I'll choose yes. And we can see, look, ooh, dark mode. I have specifically called that dark mode to see that it is different. And I like this dark mode a bit more than what you see here. So again, let's click every single cell up here in the top left. And I'll click dark mode. Now, is that not beautiful? And it, I really love it. So basically, if we want to inspect this, we can modify it and see that, yes, I do have my pattern as solid and my color is actually straight up black. And then my border is pretty black, more black than you would expect, because I don't want that really big contrast. Uh, all that to say that it doesn't matter. You can choose whatever you want, but then I apply that to everything. And then again, my font is also white. Cool. Do this however you want uh, beyond this point, but I'd love where this gets you. And so a lot of times if I'm trying to highlight something specifically, I might decide, okay, well, I want this color to be a white, like straight up white. And then maybe I want this to be a bit thicker. So line style is probably that double line thickness. And then so if I'm trying to highlight something, you could see, look at that, that is really impactful. And this is going to be really easy to see. And I can start to make certain things in my spreadsheet pop. So, okay, this is just an introduction. And this is just to get you to the point where uh, we can stand looking at Excel uh, more than, you know, a have it being straight up white, because it's just a mess to be white. And it, it hurts the eyes after a while. And this looks really nice and really clean. And whenever we start putting text here, it's, it's nice, it's white, it's readable. You know, if I want to do something like this, it's very readable. And like I said, we can put that double line in and it's it really is nice and easy to see. So this was serving as an introduction to Excel and to let you know there are tons of things that we're going to start to look at with Excel. Uh, I'm going to probably focus on a lot of things that uh, impact design, impact code, because, like for example, stairs. Uh, there's a lot that goes into stairs and a lot of numbers and a lot of things that might change depending on your, your type of project. But we can use Excel to give us a great starting point, a great outline, a great framework for determining what our stair, egress stair outcome should look like, what the width should be, everything like that. And yeah, this is not directly tied to Revit, but that is one example to where uh, you can pass it around your firm if you have a really great outline on with all the code and everything built in, baked in, and use that for every single project, knowing that the results going to be quite different. And that's going to allow you to go straight from Excel, looking at all the data and everything that you need to worry about uh, from a code standpoint, and then immediately just modeling your stairs the way they need to be. Now, I know that's one example, but there are a ton of other ways that you can implement things like that, whether it's life safety, whether it's plumbing calculations, there's tons of different things that you can do. And like I said before, I really want to focus on the automation side because yeah, what I just mentioned isn't automatic in a sense that it would plug directly into Revit, but there are a lot of other things that we can do. Maybe when it comes to details, smart tags, keynotes, there's a lot that we can do uh, that pushes in and out of Revit based on what we might have as far as specifications or like actual files in our file server things like that. So there's a ton. I would encourage you to stick around for more Excel videos. There's going to be a lot. We're going to look into Excel and hopefully Power BI because we want to be able to display this data, share this data in a way that's not just limited to our basic spreadsheet here. While the spreadsheet's great, Excel has a lot of capabilities. We really do want to look at a lot more than just that when it comes to a visualization and presentation standpoint.
So I encourage you again to stick around for more Excel videos and please let me know in the comments what you, what you think of Excel. How, if you use Excel for architecture, Revit, whatever it might be, because I'm curious how you use it and some things that you might have thought of why you want to use it or how you want to use it. Also, Dynamo integrates with Excel really, really well. So there's a ton of things that we can do uh, to have Excel serve as a really good place for data to ultimately end up, whether we put it there ourselves or get it from Revit, things like that. So I would encourage you to stick around. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.